You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on kinematics. The topic of this video is position time graphs for changing velocity motion. And here are the questions we wish to answer in this video. What does a position time graph look like for a changing velocity motion? How is a speeding up and a slowing down motion represented on such a graph? And finally, how can you determine the direction of the velocity and the acceleration vectors from a position time graph. Let's get started. Let's begin with a short snappy review of some of the things that we've been talking about in this video tutorial on kinematics. First, we've been talking about constant speed versus changing speed. Objects can be moving at the same rate or they can be speeding up or slowing down. One way we often represent this is by the means of a dot diagram, and you see three dot diagrams here on the screen. Now, for constant speed motion, that means that the dots are equally spaced. The object moves the same distance in each consecutive second. For objects that are slowing down, we notice that over the course of time, the spacing between dots is decreasing because the object is traveling lesser, less and less distance every consecutive second. And the opposite is true of the speeding up objects where the uh, dot spacings increases over the course of time because the object is covering more distance in each consecutive seconds. Now, we've been talking about position time graphs for constant velocity motions, and what we've learned is that those position time graphs are straight diagonal lines for constant velocity motion. Now, in such a situation, such lines have constant slope, and the slope is important because it reveals information about the velocity of the object. So we often say, as the slope goes, so goes the velocity. Here on a position time graph, you see four lines, and they're all straight, so it all means that the object has a constant velocity because of the constant slope lines. But all of these motions are quite different because if we look at object number one, the line is a, has a steep slope or a large slope, and so that's an object that has a large velocity. The line also has positive slope, so it's an object that has a positive velocity. This is a fast object moving in the positive direction. And if you look at line number two, what you notice about that line is it's less steep. It's a small slope and therefore a small velocity. It's a positive slope and a positive velocity. We might say the object's moving slow with a positive velocity. Line three is a line that has zero slope, so that's quite easy. That's an object that has zero velocity. It's not moving at all. And finally, line four has a small slope and it's a negative slope, so that means the object's moving slowly in the negative direction. So all of that was a review of constant velocity motions for a position time graph. Now what we're going to look at is a changing velocity motion, an acceleration. Here we have a car that starts at rest and accelerates at 8.0 meters per second per second. It picks up speed, 8.0 meters per second of speed, every one second of motion. We see the, uh, a picture of the car's position at one second intervals of time. And if we call the front tire of the car at the zero second mark, Mark, the origin on this diagram, then we can locate the car's front tire, the car's position, at every consecutive second. And you see it listed there as 4 meters and 16 meters and 36 meters, 64 meters and 100 meters at 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 seconds. If we take this data for position and time and put it in a data table and then plot it on a graph, what you'll notice is that the line curves becoming steeper each consecutive second. A matter of fact, a tangent line is drawn on the graph at 0 seconds, 1 seconds, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, etc., all the way up to 5 seconds. And what you notice is that over the course of time, that tangent line is going from not so steep to rather steep. And so that's an example of a speeding up object. Now we're going to look at a different motion. We're going to look now at an object that's accelerating but doing the slowing down form of acceleration. We see a picture of the position of a car that's slowing down, starting at 40 meters per second and decelerating at a rate of negative 8 meters per second per second. If we call the front tire of the car at 0 seconds, the origin on this diagram, then we can locate the car's position at 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 second intervals of time. And so we've done that on the diagram. You see the positions 36, 64, 84, 96, and 100 meters. And if we take these times and corresponding positions and put them in a data table, and then plot the points on a position time graph, 
what we notice is that the line that connects the point, the best fit line, is a curved line that gets shallower and shallower over the course of time. That is, it gets less steep over the course of time. In fact, if you look on the diagram, what you notice is that a tangent line is drawn on the graph at zero seconds, one seconds, two seconds, etc. And the slope of that tangent line gives us the velocity of the object. And so the velocity is getting less and less over the course of time since the slope is becoming less and less over the course of time. So let's summarize these past two slides. What we've learned is that objects with a changing velocity are represented by lines on a position time graph that have a changing slope. That is, they're curved lines. While constant velocity was a straight line, changing velocity is a curved line. And we've learned that the slope represents information about the velocity of the object. So for speeding up objects, what we notice is that the lines become steeper over the course of time. And for slowing down objects, we notice that the lines become less steep over the course of time. So we're going to take a moment to contrast constant speed versus changing speed. What we notice is that for constant speed objects, the lines are straight. They can be straight with a big slope or straight with a small slope. And what the straightness tells us is it's a constant speed, and what the slope tells us is how big that speed value is. So a big slope is a fast-moving object, and a smaller slope, a slow-moving object. If we contrast that with changing speed, what we notice is changing speed objects have a curved lines. They're accelerating either from fast to slow or slow to fast. And if they're accelerating from fast to slow, then the line starts out sleep, s steep and then finishes a little flatter. And if they're going from slow to fast, that is speeding up, then the line starts out flat and finishes a little steeper. If you remember on the first slide of this presentation, we showed dot diagrams for constant speed and changing speed objects. And we said the constant speed objects move the same distance each consecutive second. That is, the spacing between dots is never changing. If we represent that by a position time table, you'll notice something like what we see there in the top row, that the position changes every one second of time are always the same. 0 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, that's always the same change in position. On a position time graph, what we notice is for every fixed one second of run along the horizontal axis, there's a constant rise along the vertical axis, thus making the line a straight line. Contrasted with changing speed objects, the dot diagram would show that, each, that, that the dot spacing is changing over the course of time. The object moves a different distance each consecutive second. So in a position timetable, from row to row, the changes in position are not equal. And in a position time graph, if we take a fixed one second of time along the horizontal axis for that amount of run, the amount of rise is varying over the course of time. That is, the line curves. So accelerating objects, changing speed objects, are represented by these curved lines on position time graphs. So the trick is to make meaning of these graphs based upon the slope principle, that as the slope goes, so goes the velocity. So what we see here are four changing velocity graphs, and the two on the right are for moving in the positive direction. I know that because the slopes of the lines are all positive over the course of time. And a positive slope means a positive velocity, the objects moving in the positive direction. The two lines on the right, on the other hand, slope downwards. They have negative slope. And a negative slope means a negative velocity. So these are objects that are moving in the negative direction. Now, the slope represents the velocity. So if we see a big slope, we know it's moving fast. And if we see a small slope, we know it's moving slow. And the slowest you can go, is zero velocity. So that's a line with zero slope, a perfectly horizontal or flat line. So if we look at the two graphs on the right, graph number one starts with a big slope, that's for fast, and finishes with a zero slope, that's as slow as you can go. Graph number one is a slowing down object. And graph number two is the opposite. It starts with zero slope, very, very, very slow, and finishes with big slope. So that's fast. So graph number two is going from slow to fast. We'll put that in the speeding up category. 
story. Now if we look at the two plots on the right, graph number three is a line that starts slow with zero slope and finishes steep, steep negative, but still steep. And so that's a fast moving object. That's graph number three shows an object going from slow to fast, and that also is a speeding up object. Contrasted with line number four, that's an object that has a, it starts out fast because of the big slope and finishes slow because of the zero slope. That's a slowing down object. Now it's your turn to practice. Here are four dot diagrams and four position time graphs. And what you have to do is look at the dot diagram and then reason towards which graph corresponds to that particular dot diagram. The arrows that you see on the dot diagram represent the direction the object's moving. So what I'd like you to do is pause this video, give this some thought, and then match dot diagrams A through D with one of the four position time graphs. Once you're done thinking about it, go ahead and press play and we can check your answers. Okay, here's your answers. Diagram A corresponds to graph number three. If we look at diagram A, it's got an a positive velocity, it's moving to the right. So we have to match it with either uh, graph number two or graph number three. Graph number two shows a slowing down motion since the line's becoming flatter over time. So we have to match this diagram A with graph number three because that shows speeding up. If we look at diagram B, we notice that object's moving to the left. So we read the diagram uh, starting with the dot on the far right and heading towards the left and that's a slowing down object that's moving in the negative direction. So we have to match graph number uh, dot diagram number B with either plot number one or plot number four because each of these have a negative sloping line. We match it with graph number one because that's the one that shows steep to flat, that's a slowing down object. Now we get to dot diagram C, which is a positive velocity moving in the in the positive direction and slowing down. So we have to match that up with graph number two because of its positive slope and because of the fact that it starts steep for fast and finishes flatter for slower. Finally, dot diagram D shows an object moving to the left. So that's got a negative velocity and it's getting faster over the course of time. So we match that up with graph number four because that too has the negative slope for the negative velocity and it's starting flat and finishing steep. So that's a speeding up object. How'd you do? Well, it ends up that the motion of objects are not always that simple. Oftentimes what we observe is that the object moves in several stages, like as shown in this position time graph. You'll notice that the stages are lettered with an A, a B, and a C, and each stage ends or begins where there's a dot. To analyze such motions, you need to take it one stage at a time. So if we look at stage A, what we notice is a positively sloped line that's getting steeper over the course of time. So what we would say is that this object's moving in the positive direction and speeding up. Then we look at stage B, and what we notice when we look at the line in stage B is it's got positive slope, but it starts steep and then it finishes a little shallower. So we would say that's an object also moving in the positive direction due to the positive slope, but it's getting slower over the course of time. And finally, if we look at the line in stage C, what we notice is it's perfectly flat. It's a line with zero slope, so what we would say is the object's now at rest. It's not moving at all. That's an example how you would take a multi-stage motion and analyze it one stage at a time. Hey, now it's your turn to practice. So here you see two graphs, position time graphs, and what you have to do is describe the two-stage motion of the objects in example A and example B. So why don't you pause the video, get out a sheet of scratch paper, and jot down some notes as to how you think you describe these objects. And when you're ready, press play and see how you did. Okay, if we look at example A, what we notice is that the line starts curved and then it turns flat. So what we would say is the object's moving with a, in the positive direction and changing its speed in stage A. Since the line goes from steep to a little bit less steep, we'd say the object's slowing down. And finally, in stage B of example A, the line is straight, so we'd say the object's moving with a constant velocity in the positive direction. Now, if we look at example B, what we notice is in stage A, the line is curved, 
and in stage B the line is curved, so both stages show some form of acceleration. In stage A, the line starts steep and then gets flat while, while, while showing a positive slope. So stage A is an object moving in the positive direction and slowing down. And in stage B, the line's got a negative slope. So we say that's an object moving in the negative direction, but the line starts flat and then gets very steep. So that's moving in the negative direction and speeding up. How did you do? Perhaps the most difficult thing to do on a position time graph is to determine the direction of the velocity and the acceleration vectors. We need to first understand the rules for velocity and acceleration vector direction. For velocity, the direction is in the direction the object moves. So we look at the slope to see if it's positive or negative. If it's positive, we say the object has positive velocity. And if the slope is negative, we say the object has negative velocity. The acceleration direction is a more complicated rule. First, we have to determine which direction the object moves, and then we have to determine whether it's speeding up or slowing down. For speeding up objects, the rule is that the acceleration is in the same direction the object moves. And for slowing down objects, the rule is that the acceleration is in the opposite direction that the object moves. So now we apply these two rules to the four different plots. If we look at plot number one, we notice that the line is pos that the line is sloped positively. So that's an object with a positive velocity. We also notice that the line starts steep and finishes flatter. So that's an object that's moving from fast to slow or slowing down. So since it's slowing down, the direction of the acceleration is the opposite the direction of the velocity. Since the velocity is positive, the acceleration is negative. Now let's approach line number two. That line is also sloped positively, so that's an object with a positive velocity. But the line starts rather flat and finishes steep, so that's an object that's speeding up. Because it is speeding up, the direction of the acceleration is the same as the direction of the velocity. Now let's look at line number three. That line slopes downwards negatively, so we would say that's an object that has a negative velocity. But we notice that the line starts flat and finishes steep, so for line number three, that's an object that's speeding up. Because it's speeding up, the direction of the acceleration is the same as the direction of the velocity. It's got a negative acceleration. Finally, for line number four, that's sloping negatively as well, so that's an object that has a negative velocity. It starts steep and finishes flat, so it's an object that's slowing down. Because it is slowing down, the direction of the acceleration is the opposite of the direction of the velocity, so we would say that the acceleration is positive. So to summarize these four lines, the direction of the acceleration is positive for line 2 and line 4, and negative for line 1 and line 3. I think we've done it. We figured out that for a position time graph, a changing velocity motion is represented by a curved line. And we figured out that for speeding up, those curved lines start rather flat and get steep over the course of time. And for slowing down, they start steep and they become flat over the course of time. And we've also learned how to determine the direction of the velocity and the acceleration vectors from these position time graphs. So we've accomplished the purpose. Now, it's at this point in the video, I like to give you an action plan, a way of helping you out to further your learning. But before I help you out, could I ask you to help us out a little bit? First of all, if you like the video, why don't you click on the like button down below? And if you like the video, maybe you'd like to subscribe to the channel. If you do, you'll get notifications whenever a new video comes out, and we have a lot more coming at you over the course of the school year. Finally, if you have any questions or comments, why don't you leave your questions or comments down below in the comments section. Now for the action plan. First thing that you should recognize is that you have to do something in order to, to make this learning solid. So one thing that you could do is you could head off to our website and you could check out in the Physics Interactive section an application called Graphs and Rams. It's structured kind of like a game. You got, this, um, you got this graph that you have to match. So you have to build a series of ramps that a ball rolling along the ramps would move in such a way that its position time graph would match a target graph. Go do it. Give it a try. It's kind of fun and you'll enjoy it. It's a great way to learn. Second thing that we'd like to suggest is a concept builder. Students love concept builders. You go to our website, you'll see a link to a one specific concept builder in the description section below. It's called the Position Time Graphs Conceptual Analysis. There's three activities on there. Any one of the three would, would be great practice to solidify your learning on position time graphs. And then if you're a Minds on Physics user, you can 
you can go to uh, the App Store and you can get Minds on Physics app number one on your phone or your tablet. And when you do, what you'll be able to see is there's three modules on there. And the second module is called Kinematic Graphing. Missions KG1 through KG3 are great ways to solidify your learning on this topic of position time graph. Give it a try. Finally, if all you need is just some sort of reference to review, we have a tutorial at our website that sort of mirrors what we're doing in these video tutorials. You could go there and you could check out the kinematics chapter. Lesson three is all about position time graphs. Uh, there's three pages there. Give them a try. They'd be a great reference to follow up on this video. Whatever you do, good luck to you. Learn some physics.